Here our coverage does continue now with anchor Michael Williams and Tanya Rogers there in the field. As we did hear uh, from the sheriff oh, a while ago, it was a very chaotic scene yesterday. More than 1,000 people reportedly at this event, and the sheriff's office now saying they found over 50 shell casings. Michael, walk us through what else we know at this hour about this investigation. Shannon, I'll do that in just a moment to, to tell you we will go through those particulars. And Tanya, you'll have an interview that gives us more perspective in a moment as well. Yes. Talk about that. Yeah, I definitely will because we've been speaking to so many people who have talked about whether they were here or where they heard about it. It's just heartbreaking. So we want to share what the community is trying to do to make a difference in this community to actually take people away from any kind of violence in the community. We're going to have that interview upcoming. Back to your question, Shannon. Let me talk about that. 12 people injured, eight shot, three different calibers of weapons were used here. At the time of the shooting, around 5.23 p.m., a joyful day, a family day here, a car show going on in Iloa Ellis Park, which is county run, surrounded by the city of Fort Pierce. So all this under the jurisdiction in terms of the investigation of the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office. They said two units were on the scene at the time, providing normal security, and that within minutes of the shootings, seven more units were on scene. St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office working with local, state, and federal authorities on the shooting scene that turned this beautiful scene so ugly and for one woman and her family so horrific and deadly. Here in part is what the sheriff had to say. Yesterday was Martin Luther King Day, uh, a legacy built on nonviolence, and sadly, uh, we experienced violence in our community. Our heartfelt sympathies go out to the young lady's family. Uh, who lost her life in this senseless act, and our community in general. Once again, the anguished cries, the what can we do to make a difference? And once a loved one is buried and a family must go on its own, the bigger question, what this time, if anything, will change? Also, I should note, this afternoon, several of our teams in this parking lot behind me saw crime scene technicians, but no crime scene rope, at least apparent to us, one of the questions we'd like to ask the sheriff's office about in terms of how pristine the crime scene was kept after the shooting because we saw crime scene techs looking around. I should note, too, that on this most high-profile case, we've been asking to talk to the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office directly to have reporters present. Thus far, they have not set up a news conference where we could be there to ask questions and to ask follow-up questions. They've said, send your questions in, and have basically given us video news releases based on that. We're still seeking a chance to ask direct questions about security here, about intelligence, if there is any surrounding the possibility of threats. What was the motive here? Who did it involve potentially? Were there things at play they might have known about? We hope we get those one-on-ones or a sit down in a news conference where we can ask those questions directly. We'll keep knocking on their door. For now, Tanya, as we said at the outset, with an interview that lends perspective to all that happened over this last awful 24 hours. Yeah, and it definitely is just heartbreaking to actually speak to so many of these people who are here or whether they heard about it. Now, I want to introduce you to a local community activist. This is Kevin Duhart. So thank you so much for joining us. Now, you were at an MLK event, a festival, correct? Five blocks away. Tell me how you found out what happened. Um, so I mean, my name is Henry Duhart, and I was basically doing an event with the MLK committee, and we did a festival that was around the same time, just literally five blocks down. And literally, as we we're closing our event, that was so successful and positive. Around 5:30, we seen about 30 cop cars swarming through our event. Um, you know, it is MLK, and it has happened maybe for the last two years, not to this extent. And I found out basically after making sure all the people were good and getting home and taking a shower, I wake up and I see that we're like on most national stations. And unfortunately, this morning, we found out that also someone passed as well from the shooting. So that's kind of how I found out. Now, Henry, you were born, raised here. And tell me how you're trying to make a difference, especially with young people. What are you doing to try to change things about the violence in the community? Um, so actually, I ran for office when I was 23 years old. And after doing all that, I got involved in a lot of community service. And I now work for Families of Church of Coast as a coordinator. I basically, throughout the whole year, I take different groups of people, especially young people, and we do community projects. So we've planted community gardens at elementary schools. Uh, we've done uh, feeding the homeless projects. We do classes where we teach young people entrepreneurship and just people in general. Because I think why things like this keep happening is people don't have hope and people need access to opportunities and, and financial literacy and opportunities to, to build and take care of their families. And when you don't have those things, you have things like this happen where people have no hope and crimes like this happen. 
do you ever get discouraged when something like this happens? Because it almost fe feels like a vicious cycle and it's like no one can get out of the cycle. Mm -hmm. Do you ever lose hope or you're still trying to hang in there? I've always been very optimistic. Um, I grew up here and of course we've had a, somewhat of a history of gun violence. So it's not that we're numb to it, um, but it's the fact that it has happened before. So I don't lose hope. I'm just always optimistic about, if, you know, someone has to keep trying, somebody has to keep doing something. So I've just been that one of those people, but we need more people of all generations to come together um, and do more because obviously there's a problem. And I think that it takes more than just the organization I work for, some of the few that are doing the work. We need more people in elected officials and people in power to do more about what's going on and really to give opportunity to the people because without opportunity, the people are going to continue to do certain things and make irrational decisions. And one more thing, you said that you ran for office when you were 23. Today is your birthday. You yes. are 29 years old yes. and you're not giving up. Tell me what keeps you going in this community. Um, yes, yeah, so I ran when I was 23 and I ran for county when I was 26. Um, what keeps me going is this is my home. Uh, one of the reasons I ran for office is because I saw like a pothole and I saw the conditions of my community and I realized that my grandmother it, uh, would die here and, and live and have died here. I have family members here. So what keeps me going is my family and the people in this community. If I stop, then who's going to help them? If I stop, then will we continue to allow, you know, oppression and different things to happen? So what just keeps me going is my family. When I look at my nieces, London and Paris, when I look at my mother, when I look at my community, and when I look at all those people who who did have a great time just five blocks down and how happy they were to do an event had no violence. Um, that's really what keeps me going, the people of Fort Pierce and the people of St. Lucie County. All right, Henry, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We know that we will be talking to you later. Thank you. So thank you so much. I want to bring Michael back in and Michael again, you know, speaking to people today, you know, I mean, they were like, we need a voice, you know, where our hearts are breaking, especially eight people and then we've lost one. But there's also people like Henry who want to offer hope, which I think is great. Voices being offered, but more voices needed. Sadly, it is a familiar lament. Gun violence, as I said at the outset, anguish. But what will happen which will take that frustration, take the loss, and turn it into something to keep this from happening again and again and again and again? It's in this community now, but we've heard about it from one end of our community to the other at various times. Right now, the search is on for a suspect or suspects and trying to understand what was the motive behind this. St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office needs the help of the community to get those answers, and we'll keep seeking answers from them as well. Much more coverage throughout the evening for now, for Tanya, for me, our entire team. That's it for the moment from Fort Pierce. Back to you, Shannon.